Hello, it's Mrs. Glasson. I want to talk to you today about lesson three of unit one of the 11 plus foundation course. My introduction to punctuation and the first time your children might hear the words, but certainly not the last time, showcase your punctuation. And we also think about characterization, this whole idea of characters being constructs. And we focus on the three different types of comprehension question that could come up. You learn oodles of wonderful vocabulary. And we also ask Maya Angelou to come into our lesson to teach us a little bit about study skills. And study skills, independent learning, learning for life is an integral part of the course and of my teaching as well as the other essential punctuation points that your child needs to know, I really focus on colons and semicolons in this lesson. So colons and semicolons, which are really impressive, where as a creative writing marker for the 11 plus and for the entrance exams that I used to write, it's really impressive when children of this age can use colons and semicolons effectively. And of course, it's obvious, but just look how important it is, um, punctuation is, I should say, to creative writing. I mean, there is an obvious link, is there not? It actually mentions in the mark scheme that students should be able to use a wide range of punctuation with a high level of accuracy. So this whole idea, moving on from that, of actually showcasing your skill, deliberately using a range of punctuation. And that is exemplified very well for your children through the examples of superb creative writing that I show them. It's one thing being told what to write, I suppose, and told what you should include, but it's very different when you're actually shown how to write, how to vary your punctuation, how to showcase your skills. And the wonderful feedback that I have received is that previously, previous to my lesson, um, children didn't know how to use colons and semicolons, or at least they'd been taught, but they were a little bit confused. So, as said previously, I give examples and explanations, and then your children are able to actually do the exercises themselves. Very important. And also, of course, I relate um, the punctuation that I teach to creative writing. Um, it's one of the marks of me, I think, this whole idea in description or in narrative of using at least one phrasal list punctuated by semicolons and introduced by a colon. And whom do we go to to look for um, a great example of this? But to Charles Dickens himself. So in lesson four, when I introduce your children to that wonderful extract from one of my favorite novels, Great Expectations, there we have a masterclass from Charles Dickens in how to use phrasal lists to create certain effects. That amazing sympathy that is created for the protagonist, Pip, um, with his aptronymic name, and that's something that your children learn about also. Um, the sympathy that is invited from the reader through the description of Magwitch, of course, a man, a man, a man, focusing all the time on his humanity. And that is all achieved through, amongst other many things that Dickens uses so skillfully, through his use of punctuation. So he is showing your children how important punctuation is and how important it is to use punctuation effectively in your creative writing. So use the full range of punctuation, showcase your skills. 
And in lesson three, your children are, of course, tested on the wonderful vocabulary that they have learnt in lesson two. So amongst the different adjectives for the supercilious hair um, and how, and you know, this whole idea of how haughty he is also, amongst those adjectives, we also learn about analysis as well. So there are also other terms that I teach. I call them the fables vocabulary. So prose, what is prose? And also text in the context in which I use it in my teaching. Um, we also find out about explicit and implicit meaning. And as I have said before, I talk to your children in the target language. So connotes and implies. And I've also taught your children already that those fables, like parables, are allegorical. And also in lesson three, your children learn wonderful vocabulary, those wonderful, wonderful synonyms, very important. So synonyms for chatty, quiet, lazy, hardworking and sneaky. So words like loquacious, garrulous, lackadaisical, which was a great word that my dad used to use and often uh, mispronounce as well, um, conscientious, diligent, duplicitous, conniving, surreptitious. So they are just a few of the wonderful synonyms that your child will learn in lesson three. So you wouldn't want them to miss out on any of those. And as always, the point is made that these are not archaic words. These aren't words that you can't use every day in your vernacular. These are words which will enhance your um, learning of English at school and also the writing that you do for exams and as always with my lessons for life. Um, and also those wonderful uh, things that we learn about self-studying and about having a love for learning from that wonderful quotation from Maya Angelou that used to actually hang above the door in my classroom and served as a very kind of salutary motto to all of those who entered there. And of course, as well as showcasing your punctuation, um, the creative writing uh, mark scheme, any creative writing mark scheme, will also reward ambitious vocabulary. And this word compelling, you can see why I did it, was taught to your children in lesson one. So subsequently, when I'm talking about producing compelling texts, they will actually understand what I'm talking about, which is always very useful. And one of my favourite lessons, actually, and so a lesson I think really changes your children's way of writing is lesson five, when I will teach them literary terminology. So this whole idea of how to craft certain linguistic devices, which are also obviously rewarded by creative writing examiners. And so coming back to the beginning then, Lesson three, all about showcasing your punctuation. And it's also about characterization, comprehension, wonderful vocabulary, and those all important study skills. So all of my lovely 11 plus foundation course students, now you can see why lesson three is so important to your learning of English and also to your writing as well. So as English students, punctuation, showcasing your punctuation, that is just so important. And whether you are studying for the 11 plus, like some of you, or if you are some of my year six students who are taking my course for a little bit of a confidence boost before you go on to your secondary school, you will be able to understand the full range of punctuation. And don't forget, don't just use what I teach you when you're doing things for me. Use what I teach at school. So use those colons, those phrasal lists. Use those semicolons to really impress your teachers and also to practice that particular kind of punctuation. 
And don't forget what I have taught you about characterization, those wonderful examples that we read. And what we learned from Maya Angelou about study skills and also about learning from our mistakes, how our mistakes should be seen as learning opportunities. And of course, that wonderful, wonderful vocabulary. So if you're enrolled on the course already, then that's what you have to look forward to. If you've taken lessons one and two, then please do enroll for the rest of the course. Um, and if you're thinking about enrolling, then first of all, take the free lessons. They're there for free. Lessons one and two of unit one of the 11 plus foundation course. A great way to consolidate and to extend your Key Stage 2 skills. I really enjoyed talking to you today about Lesson 3, so please look out for the other lessons. Thank you very much. Click on the link below to enrol for those free lessons and to find out more about my teaching, go to my Facebook page or go to www.mrsglasson.com. Thank you.